Picture this. You beat a Lancer challenge quest a year or so back. You're newer to the game, so your servant roster wasn't as developed as it is now. You didn't have decent investment in a good saber, so you just defaulted to your strongest berserker. With ample struggle, you made do, and the lore was yours. Fast forward back to now, and you have a more well-rounded roster. If you had to do another Lancer challenge quest, you won't have to try as hard because you actually have a saber to deal with it. That's all well and good, but there's a problem now. That berserker you invested in back then. What is their purpose? When will you use that berserker instead of your saber? When will you use that berserker at all? Hello, I'm Otto. I make FGO stuff on YouTube. This video is a bit of a deviation from the norm, if there was a norm to speak of. So if you like this type of video, press the usual buttons. I've had this thing bouncing in my brain for quite a while now and want to try and make something less constrained by the review format. I hope you all enjoy as we delve into the single target berserker issue. Now, why do I specify single target? The problem most people bring up is the typing, right? Not only do berserkers take double damage from basically everything, but they also don't even deal double damage in basically any situation. Berserker advantage is only a 50% bonus, not a full 100% like with full counterclass. While yes, the problem does stem from the inherent disadvantages of the class, that isn't the biggest problem. Berserkers don't only have to fight the enemy, but they also have to fight your other servants to even get the chance to fight the enemy. Their problem is viability. They need to sell over the safer picks. So again, what makes it only a single target problem? To understand why, we have to first figure out the positives of a Berserker in general. Multi-class viability. If you invest in a Berserker, then they could stand in for some of your weaker classes. That's why some of the most popular hyper investments are Berserkers. Oftentimes, they stand in for caster DPSs just because offensively, casters are pretty lacking. They're capable of being a secondary option in case you don't have better options. That being said, Alter Egos can kinda serve the same role if you need a cavalry killer. They're better because, despite being equal offensively in theory, they take half the damage of a Berserker. However, Alter Egos are more rare. There's barely any general pool Alter Egos, and they're like 15 gold Berserkers for some reason. Most Berserkers have Buster decks. Buster cards are the best card for damage. Considering how a couple top tier supports give some beefy buffs to them, including a way of bypassing Berserker Star Absorb problems, I see it as a bit of a positive. It also means you frequently have more opportunities to get the Buster Starting Bonus, which helps maximize your damage. Berserkers also have additional synergy with Chengo. Many won't use him for that reason, but considering how everyone has him and should have him leveled at this hypothetical point, I think it's a fair point to bring up. Easy cycling. The fragility of a berserker can be a positive. Sometimes having someone pop in, demolish a bar or two, and then die instantly can be pretty handy. Higher offensive focus. Many berserkers just want to do a ton of damage, so their kit just focuses on that. Sometimes you just want to win faster. These are some decent arguments for their viability, however there are a few big problems with these. Let's take a walk backwards. The higher offensive focus doesn't always matter, even high damage output berserkers can get out damaged by counterclasses with middling output. Selectively cycling servants is pretty advanced strategy. People are used to doing this with support servants, but we're talking the cycling of DPS servants, hardly the tactics an average FGO Andy would run. Some non-berserkers have buster decks. Additionally, you might want arts cards instead of buster cards, so you don't rely on card damage as much. One is the most important argument in what this video's initial premise rests on. Multi-class advantage is best if you're fighting multiple classes. That's good for AoEs, however, single target berserkers don't get the same benefit. They fight one enemy at a time, so they compete with one class at a time. They suffer the most in this class because those arguments apply to them the least. It also doesn't help that AoEs have good enough card damage that they sometimes do as much, if not more, than a comparable single target for surfer. So you might be sitting there shaking your head no because there are actually good single target berserkers. I'm being very critical of this class archetype, but there is one saving grace that some exhibit. Some berserkers have their own things that they do better than most applicable counterclassers. This is what is called niche. 
If something has a niche, it means it is disproportionately advantageous in certain scenarios. The most common instance of this comes in the form of super effective niches. Usually there are special multipliers that increase NP damage versus special types of enemies. Most of the time, it's a boost against some damage or alignment. A popular example of this is Mysterious Heroine X Alter. Her kit is pretty lackluster, but she does bonus damage against Saber Servants and good enemies. When she hits either of those, she outdamages almost all archers outside of their niches. Quick note, it is not lost on me how funny this is, because like I, I wrote this before Summer Musashi got her buff, and holy sh**, Lamau. <laughs> There's more than one interpretation to niche, though. Ku Alter has two special niches. He might not be amazing on damage potential, but he's really good defensively. He's more durable than a lot of main class servants due to his mixture of guts, evade, attack down, defense, and crit rate down. He has another niche people often forget about. That is, until you fight his advanced quest, then you remember that he removes defensive buffs before dealing NP damage. This is a really uncommon niche that a lot of main classes don't have access to. Kremhild has the same effect, except except she has other offensive niches instead of defensive ones. Even then, she has a targetable taunt, which is insanely rare, and very good for her class in particular. She can also kick off an NP really fast because of her 50% battery. Despite how a pin's turned a lot of 30s into effective 50s, the value of a 50% charge can still see higher value. Kintoki is a great example of this because of his farming potential. His kit is very flimsy, but it fits farming really well. 50 is a pretty sweet spot for all the various square holes you can fit the cylinder into. What the f*** does that line mean? He can just chunk out a big bit of damage for one target with basically no supports needed, so he can function in multi-core of all sorts of card types. Berserker Castoria doesn't have as high a damage floor as him, but she has a way higher ceiling and synergizes better with better options. She has a modest 70% battery, triple special damage bonus, and some fun team survival spam, a whole package and more. Galatea offensively isn't really much anything to write home about, but she has a ton of niches to speak of. 6,000 health for the team every 7 turns, as well as multiple team debuff clears, self buff removal resist, a means to circumvent pierce invul, and the list goes on. She has such a unique blend of niches that literally no other servant can bring to the same extent, except it's on a class that can go basically anywhere. A Swiss army knife, basically. The niche I don't see much use of with her is her high NP refund. Challenge quests let you use your cards, so refund on a single target is just kind of redundant. It's very rare among single target servants, but oddly enough, she's not the first single target berserker to have this niche. It's time to talk about Vlad. Few servants have fluctuated so strongly in the meta throughout the years as Vlad III. He was released as one of the three art servants on launch. Each of these art servants had very scuffed at NP damage scaling because the Lightworks didn't know what it was doing apparently. Vlad wasn't an exception. To make matters worse, his card gain was gutted to compensate for having NP refund. This was before the accident of quick looping was normalized. Looping wasn't really a thing to begin with, so I, I really don't know why his card gain was that bad. Vlad was bad at launch. Nothing in the story was difficult, so the meta was just spamming red cards and he was the only berserker that didn't have three red cards. And then Camelot rolled about, and now there's a little bit of difficulty. Vlad got an NP upgrade, less of an upgrade and more of a fix. He eventually wormed himself into a pretty good challenge quest team with Tomomo and Waver. The three could spam NP drains, and Tomomo finally brought a hint of Vlad's highest selling point, NP refund. He was able to NP back to back on some turns, but usually you had to bridge the gap with the other two's batteries. His occasional looping was composed of a little bit of refunding, then bridging the gap with battery skills or NPs. The three had good synergy. All three can drain charge, and they all have defense buffs. He still had scuff damage, but it was tolerable with Waver and Tam. Then along came Scotty, and the entire way the game was played changed. People won quick. You brought a quick DPS, spammed quick NP and quick crits, and won quickly before the enemy could do anything. This was when turn attack evolved from an optional challenge to a legitimate strategy, because it was easy. With the strength of Scotty and Merlin, many felt that arts got left behind. Stall has always been effective, but the only number people don't want to see high is the turn counter, so teams with Vlad fell off. A few more years later, and we get the stupidest servant to ever exist. K. 
Castor Artoria basically broke the game. The step that Scotty took is dwarfed by Castoria's giant leap. Scotty was game-breaking because she allowed for what we used to call easy looping, as well as high damage output for more than one turn at a time. Castoria was that times five. Lots of art servants can loop without any starting charge at all, where with Quick, Super Scope was basically mandatory. Black Rail used to be a difficult pick because it took a while to get 100% charge, but when two of one support can get you that first NP, and then the second and third NPs as well with barely any effort, it became the norm. It wasn't just the refund that was game breaking. Scotty was pretty niche. Most servants don't care about quick buffs, so she was basically just battery support. Useful for sure, but basically an inferior waiver outside of quick teams, since he had attack instead of defense down, split charge, and splash charge. Castoria also has split charge and splash charge. 20% targetable and 30% AoE is just better than waivers. She outclassed him in his most common use, farming, and also outclassed Scotty if you weren't specifically quick looping. Even then, there were times when you could use Castoria in place of a second Scotty. She could do normal things better than ever. Everyone else. Then her MP is gross. Imagine David's support effects. One hit of AoE evade, 18% attack, and mental debuff removal. Now imagine you have up to five hits of that evade, but it ignores not only sure hit, but pierce invuln as well. Double the attack buff and remove all debuffs instead of just mental ones. That's literally on one MP. Very balanced. Kasuria was the best support to bring to challenge quests and farming nodes alike. Normally, Jack of all trade servants like Waver lack specialization, but Cassoria was even better as an art support. Naturally, even bad art servants could get a big bump in performance just from her existence. Which brings us back to Vlad. Vlad was really unique because he had an uncharacteristically high NP refund as a single target servant. So, despite his piss gains, he was able to spam his NP with double Cassoria. Sure, he needed some overkill and extra battery, but it worked. His NP damage was scuffed still, but if you had the whole 9 yards, he could spam pretty consistently for 3 turns. But yeah, he finally has his thing. He was meta- Yeah, of course he didn't stay meta. Galatea was a boring servant release. I say this as a person who has had her grow on me to a point where I even grailed her. Her design reveal really just made me eye roll hard. Although there was no hype for her in terms of character and design, she had something gameplay wise. For some reason, they made a second single target arts berserker that can refund spam. And they made her unlimited too. Her damage was better, she did slightly better on looping, and she had interesting defensive niches that I've already mentioned. She was just better. So everyone hyped her. Vlad sucked for the third time. Then her event ends and everyone's heard the story, they buff Vlad's MP again. All is forgiven, now Galatea sucks because Vlad does like 5k more damage than her if they are both at low NP levels. Vlad enjoyed another period of peace. Korean Sky Eye came around and Buster became meta, but he didn't really lose that hard there. Buster has higher potential for the three turns it is active, but Arts has a chance of winning after turn four. Castoria is ultimately way safer. If anything, Oberon was a bit of a buff for a lot of art servants, despite his apparent buster preference. So many art servants used Black Grail, and the extra charge was always appreciated. Ironically, he affected Galatea more than Vlad, since she stacks her own NP damage buffs, but unfortunately that wasn't in the patch notes. So Vlad was meta in his niche- no, he didn't stay there. Trom brought a new challenger. Creamhild, despite being harder to obtain as a 4-star for some f***ing reason, outclassed Vlad in several ways. She lacked an NP upgrade, so both Vlad and Galatea outdamaged her in general, and she didn't have single target refund, but she had niches. She has a special attack buff versus chaotic servants, which are very common, and a super effective multiplier versus dragon enemies. Dragon is more common with servants than you would expect, and you can also use George to force the trade. He even cycles himself out very easily if need be. He fits with Berserkers fairly well. Either niche being present easily let Creamhild punch above Vlad's range. She even stole his NP ramp effect on his NP upgrade with the 20% arts resist debuff per NP. She didn't make stars like Vlad did, not that Vlad could use the stars he made. She had something better. Defensive buff removal before damage. 
This means that she doesn't have to sacrifice Black Grail whenever the enemy has an evasion gimmick. She has his drain skill, except it's AoE. She has his battery, except it's 50%. She has his 30% boost to basically all of her cards, except it boosts her arts gain because it's card buffs instead of an attack buff. Oh, speaking of card gains, Vlad has immensely bad gains. I, I gotta emphasize that. Cream has good gains. Sure, he has his refund, but you're always having to bridge the gap with either battery or enemy hit counts. His own cards, even with double Castoria, are rarely enough. If we have to rely on battery spam to spam NPs, Creamhild has the edge of a larger battery. The point, though, is she didn't have to rely on battery spam because of normal gain. It goes a bit further, though. Remember how I said Vlad sometimes may do with enemy hit counts? Creamhild can actually guarantee that. Her taunt can either guarantee someone else gets killed, or guarantees the enemy will attack her. Which means you're either going to be cycling a support, or she's going to be getting a lot of defensive NP gain, which Berserkers are well known to have a lot of. And Cassoria's third skill perfectly synergizes with that to keep her safe on that turn. But hey, at least Vlad can refund, right? Speaking of guaranteeing self-hits with high defensive NP generation, the following summer brought another competitor, this time from the Avenger class. Ares has some of the highest damage potential out of all four-star servants, which is higher than Vlad's. Unlike Krimhild, however, she can force her niche as long as they don't resist curse. Anti-servant special attack, arts buffs, defense debuffs on being attacked tied to a taunt, and super effective damage versus cursed enemies. Offensively stacked, although she lacks the degree of utility cream or Galatea have. Also, she's rated up on the best banner ever, basically. But hey, at least Lyric can refund, right? Well, so can Draco! The Arcade Glab brought another refunding single target, except she has a better class. Offensively a Berserker, defensively a Ruler. The only downside of Draco's class is that she's basically unusable against extra classes. So just don't use her against extra classes. <laughs> Vlad leans heavy on his 30 battery to loop at times, while Draco just has 30 battery at the end of every turn. Her damage was significantly lower than his against enemies that weren't Servants, Roman, or Dragon, but any of them being present means she won. Ironically, that same event gave everyone a command code that forces Roman traits, so unless the enemy is debuff immune, her damage potential is basically always above his. Speaking of damage potential above Vlad's, Castoria got really tired of Vlad sucking and decided to become a Berserker and do it herself. I've already mentioned how she has niches that demolished his damage, but Niche sounds misleading. Divine and Chaotic are very common among servants. Dude, even if she hits no niches, she has really solid and consistent crit damage, which is rare for Berserkers. Vlad might make 20 stars per NP, but Castoria can make 10 per turn and actually use them. That boosts her gains, too. Not that she needs gain that badly, considering how she has a 70% battery. But hey, at least Vlad can refund- Actually, Berserker Toria kinda can too. With double Castoria, she refunds 29% against neutral gain classes without overkill. And if you can refund 29%, double Castoria, Oberon, second append means Black Grail is three guaranteed in Bs. Granted, the only time this matters is on 111 nodes, but you can count those on one hand. You know who else can do that? Oisugi Kenshin. She spams super easy because she unironically has better arts cards than Erish Kagal, and even crosses the 29% threshold I mentioned before. As a ruler, she'll always be at neutral, but against man attribute enemies, she'll always outdamage Vlad. Man is the most common trait, by the way. On top of higher damage in niche, she takes a lot less damage because she is a ruler. Lastly, she removes all buffs on every NP, which is an objectively better version of Creamhill's removal. So it has both anti-defensive effects and anti-offensive effects. But hey, at least Vlad can refund. The single target Berserker problem is a problem not just with the Berserker class. It's a problem with the Berserkers in general. Power creep. As time progresses, Lysengle has to push the envelope with new servant releases. Most classes don't suffer too heavily from power creep because they usually don't release back-to-back -back boundary breakers for individual classes. Berserkers, however, have to push hard enough to be more viable than other classes, which is hard because the class has its own glaring weaknesses. The reason why I don't fault only the class is because there really are standout options that can be stronger than the main class competition. 
AoE ones barely have to do anything. You could remove half of Summer Ibuki's kit and she would still be EX plus tier for farming. As for single targets, Cream Hill, Galatea, Berserker Toria, and a couple others are proof that the class really can be strong. I spent a lot of time making Vlad look weak, but he's a lucky mistake. As new supports came out, he happened to synergize with them better than most. Even though he kept falling off over and over and over again, he at least had moments in the spotlight. That's more than most can lay claim to. One of my favorite servants is Kijo Koyo. She's okay, I guess, but I always have to force myself to use her. She's never a better option than the obvious solution. She's never had a real moment to shine because unlike anyone I just mentioned, she doesn't have a useful niche. She isn't alone. Many Berserkers have been completely forgotten because they just don't have a use. In my opinion, there is no blanket fix. Each weak servant needs its own personal solution. They need their own individual niches. So yeah, buff Kijokoyo. Thanks for watching.